Well, good morning, everyone. I apologize for being late, uh, uh, but uh, duty calls over at the mayor's office. Um, but I'll go ahead and jump right in. So, um, as many of you know, when um, when I was appointed to chief, I identified pretty quickly uh, a top priority of uh, preventing crime, lowering our crime rate, and working in, in collaboration with the community. Uh, it's also no secret that uh, one of our greatest crime challenges is auto theft. And we also know that, uh, that many auto thefts lead to other uh, crimes, often violent crimes. And so um, uh, it's really been uh, a challenge for us. And, and uh, here today we are going to announce um, uh, the beginning of a new program in partnership with the community that uh, gives us a greater ability to prevent cars from being stolen, uh, allow them to be recovered much more quickly, and give us a greater opportunity uh, to uh, catch those individuals that have, that have stolen those, ve uh, those vehicles and hold them accountable. So uh, with that, I'll introduce uh, Lieutenant Ryan Harris, who can uh, talk about the specifics of this particular program. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. So <clears throat> a little bit about me. Again, I'm Ryan Harris. I work as a lieutenant in the Southeast District, District 3. I was assigned there in 2022, uh, later last year, and I spent most of my career in, in vice narcotics and other investigations. Uh, when I came out to District 3, uh, my dad actually contacted me, who used to live in District 3. And in 1981, my parents moved to Denver, and my dad tells me about his car getting stolen in 1981. And what am I doing about auto theft? So obviously auto theft was an issue in the 80s, it was an issue in the 90s and the 2000s, but we're seeing a level of auto theft that's much higher than we've ever seen before. So with Chief Thomas and, and Commander Aragon, um, the ask is for us to come up with innovative strategies. So we looked at the, the data, what was it telling us, and we looked for strategies that we could impact the auto thefts that we're seeing in our community. So one of the, the ideas we came across was from Cook County, Illinois and we found that they had developed a vehicle tracker partnership. And that vehicle tracker partnership was to combat uh, carjackings for their city. So their city, uh, which includes Chicago, is about the size of uh, five million people, and they were having upwards to 2,700 carjackings a year. Now we're not experiencing uh, the same level of carjackings, but what we are experiencing is auto thefts. So we repurposed that idea, and we're here today to uh, release information about it. So in reviewing the, the information from Cook County, what we found is vehicles that are newer than 2015, the vast majority of them already have some level of tracking built into them. So this could be an infotainment system, this could be a telematic system, GPS, and other devices. What we also know is that people across our city, regardless of what type of car they have, are taking uh, in a, a beyond themselves to place some kind of tracking device in the vehicle. And that could be a Bluetooth device, it could be an aftermarket GPS. What we have not done as a community is share that information with our offenders. Share that we are tracking our vehicles and share that we are in a partnership with the Denver Police Department that if my vehicle is stolen, that I'm going to work with the Denver Police Department to recover that as quickly as possible. So this program works in two ways, one, well, three ways. This deters auto thefts. We're gonna place this sticker on people's vehicles and I'll explain that process in a second, but the information that we obtained from Cook County um, gave us information that the desire to steal a car when we advertise this sticker um, reduces by up to 50%. So this isn't going to be perfect, but this is something that the community members can do to make their car less likely um, a car that's going to be stolen. So in addition to deterring crime, we're going to make arrests on a more frequent basis. With this partnership with the community and giving us information about where your stolen car is, we can arrest our suspects and provide meaningful law enforcement intervention to those offenders. And then third, we'll reduce, when we look at all the crime that we're looking at, um, last year, we had, um, of all of our auto theft arrests, 70% of those people arrested were arrested for a secondary crime. So everything starts with the vehicle crime. 
a lot of our burglaries, our other property crimes and violent crimes starts with the use of a uh, stolen vehicle. So if we can decrease the amount of time that we have a stolen vehicle out there, our hope is and we're confident that we'll be able to decrease other crime categories as well. So how does this work? So um, we created Denver Track. So Denver Track is a website. It's on denvergov.org slash Denver Track. Anybody that lives in the city and county of Denver or works in the city and county of Denver is eligible to register. When you go to this website, you go to the registration form, and this registration form will ask for some, some pertinent information. This will include the, the year, the make, the model, your VIN number, your license plate, and the state of issuance. Next page is gonna be the owner information. And the owner information is, is the owner information for the vehicle, and that needs to be the person that's filling out this form. By filling out this form, what you are doing is you're attesting that you are the registered owner of this vehicle, that you will, um, that you do have some level of tracking available in your vehicle, and that if your vehicle is stolen, at a later date you will provide consent to the Denver Police Department. So as far as the consent goes, we're asking for that people to attest that they will provide consent at some time, but I want to, we want to get that consent on the front end of that steel. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, to ensure that that consent is not stale, to ensure that we have the registered owner, and so that um, we get that as soon as that car is stolen. So once you fill out this information, you'll be provided uh, a couple options about what sticker you would like to have. So these stickers, we have two different kinds right here. So if you um, get on here, you will be provided with these two stickers right here. One of the stickers right here will be placed on the lower right hand corner of the driver's door, right where an offender would gain entry into your vehicle. The second sticker is this one, and this one will be placed on the windshield of the car facing towards the driver. And this is another way to advertise that uh, the vehicle is being tracked and to notify that offender that this vehicle, uh, this, you, will, you won't have this vehicle for long and law enforcement will be coming for you. We have another option as well that uh, does not have the DPD badge for residents that do not want to have a DPD badge on there. They don't feel comfortable with that. There is an option for there too. So how do we get this program to be effective? First is getting community members to sign up. We've met with community members in Southeast Denver and we presented this program and we've had overwhelmingly positive feedback on this. So we need to get this information out to the public and we're gonna do that through not only talking to the media, but getting information out on social media and other digital platforms. But it's not just important that we push this information out to our community members, but we also need to advertise this to our offenders. So if you look at this poster right here, we've partnered with the Denver Sheriff Department. And the Denver Sheriff Department is going to have these placed in the intake and in all the pods in our jails. This is, they'll be receiving information about what this program's about. So if they come across a vehicle, if we have an offender that's going to reoffend, they will know that this vehicle will be recovered in a short period of time. So we understand that some people uh, might have problems filling out this, filling out this form online. Uh, so we've opened up an auto theft prevention week for next week. So Monday through Friday, uh, community members can go to any one of our six district stations between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. And there we'll have some police volunteers and officers available to assist any community members with signing up for this program. Additionally, we'll be providing catalytic converter etching kits to any community member uh, that might need that. I want to do a quick thank you to a lot of partners with this. We started developing this program in November of 2022, and that took a lot of help. Uh, that started with the Colorado Auto Theft Prevention Authority, who's been a big help in this. Uh, RTD, we've recently reached out to RTD, and we know that uh, a lot of their ridership has been victims of these crimes and we're working uh, collaboratively with them not only with RTD and their marketing team but their transit police uh, on this issue and then lastly the Denver Sheriff Department has been a great partner with this and I believe we'll continue to do so any questions
He's for holding this press conference. I want to start off with a silly one, but it's on everyone's minds. Uh, will the Denver Police Department be able to track people who don't opt, uh, who opt into this but don't actually report their car stolen? Great question. No. So if your car is not reported stolen, we will not, we cannot track you. And it's important to state when we talk about the, the level of tracking that people have. So if you have a Bluetooth device, uh, like an AirTag or a Tile, you can register for this program. The person that holds that information about where that location is, is the vehicle owner. So what we're saying when we ask for consent is we're asking for your consent for you to give us that information. We don't hold that information. Let's talk about other ones, sorry. So OnStar, OnStar, Blue Link, My Ford, um, Uconnect. There's a, a numerous amounts of telematic systems that are inside vehicles that are 2015 and newer. So with those ones, that company owns that information. The, the consumer might have the access to see that, but we don't have access to that. And again, the consent is, if your car is reported stolen, that we will use that consent to work as your advocate to locate your vehicle. And something super important you mentioned was about, you know, while this is a great innovative thing, having that sticker is a huge deterrence piece. For someone who doesn't want to opt in, are you guys gonna be uh, making these stickers available for people to pick up uh, to slap on their vehicle? So that's something we're looking at in the future, but currently uh, with us adopting data-driven uh, approaches to crime prevention and evidence-based, we need to prove some effectiveness of this program. So before we do that, um, we're gonna demonstrate some effectiveness. Do you think that um, a program like this um, could have prevented um, situations like we saw in early February where um, a vehicle owner decided to take the matter of a stolen car in his own hands and resulted in the death of Elias Armstrong? So as far as that, is that incident, um, this program is, it demonstrates that we can't put the, the toothpaste back in the tube. People are already tracking their vehicles. What this program does is provides us a safe alternative to finding your own car. And if people take one thing out of this, this press conference, what we need to get across is do not go find your own stolen car. Work with the police department and we will uh, help you safely recover your vehicle. So is there any uh, private uh, privacy concerns or considerations other than you know providing information? Like say for instance, you have a car that's not stolen, but actually, you know, let's say they have a suspended registration, or have the person, the owner has a warrant out for the arrest. Will that information from this program be used for that as well? No, so again, the consent that we would obtain, all of this is attesting that you will consent at a later date. We're not using this consent, we, we can't use this consent to go to OnStar or MyFord or, or if you have a Bluetooth device, I, I can't do anything with that information. Um, so we would only track the vehicle if your car is reported stolen. We obtain a consent at that time and then, and then we would work with a third party to gain uh, location information. Most of the time that's going to be the community member. That community member, if they're paying for OnStar, they're paying for Blue Link, they're paying for a lot of these products, or if they have that Bluetooth device like Tile or AirTag, they're going to be the owner of that information. We're just asking for that information to be shared with us. Again, this is a voluntary program. Um, yeah. Do you have any estimate on what percentage of cars on the road are 2015 and newer and have the capabilities for this? I don't. But what, what I will tell you is I think that that percentage might be not necessarily helpful to us understanding how many people are tracking their vehicles. Because what we found is people that live, um, people that live across the city are using tracking devices uh, regardless of the vehicle. And in terms of the factory installed ones like OnStar and so forth, if someone's not subscribed to that and paying the subscription, that system's not going to do any good in this case, is it? I'm glad you brought up that question. So that's not necessarily the case. So what we found in reaching out to these telematic uh, companies is that a lot of them will allow you to activate it after the car is stolen. If that is the case, then that might uh, create um, a fee or a cost that would uh, be responsible to the, the citizen that has their vehicle stolen uh, to pay for it or reactivate it. But that's not, that's not always going to be the case. In some cases, we might have where a telematic system or an infotainment system provider 
that will not provide us the information if the if it, they're not paying for it, that pay to play option. And you said this is for people who live or work in the city, is that right? Yes, sir. And the other thing that I'll add to add to answer your question is we track the top 10 uh, stolen vehicles uh, most likely to be stolen and all of those vehicles are within that uh, 2015 range. And it was mentioned that um, in Cook County, um, there was data that suggested um, that desire to steal a car when there was the use of a program like this went down. Um, do you know what kind of data was collected to, to reach that conclusion? So the, the data that was obtained for that was based on jailhouse interviews. So they did uh, what's called TTP interviews inside the jail with offenders to learn more about uh, the MO and people committing crime. When this, pres when this program, when their program uh, was presented, that was where we got 50% reduction in desire that came back with that data. But I will say that they rolled out this program publicly in October of 2022. They did this data about 30 days in before there was a big push out to not only the offenders, but to the public. So I believe and I'm confident that that number will only increase. This is, a, I have a question for the chief. Uh, this all might be, just be a coincidence, but earlier this year, Governor Polis essentially asked lawmakers to create tougher laws around car theft. Um, is this a product of that sort of mentality coming from the top? No, you know, as he mentioned, uh, this is something that we have been discussing and, and trying to identify solutions since uh, late last year. I know there's a statement made about wanting to make more um, car theft arrests. Obviously, a product like this mm -hmm. will help you guys out, but uh, wanting to, you know, have the legal ability to make those arrests and how sentencing works when the person is, you know, arrested for a car theft. Is that all at all encouraging from the governor's push to get tougher on this kind of crime? Certainly, certainly, because one of the things that we understand is helpful in crime prevention is surety of consequence. So um, the, the, the likelihood that someone is going to be arrested and then later held accountable and face consequences, I think that that's going to uh, help us significantly with reduction. Um, I saw that the first round of stickers was purchased by the Colorado Auto Theft Prevention Authority. Uh, has there been any thought to potential long-term funding needs for the program? Yeah, so what we've what we found is we've had a lot of different partners come forward and other jurisdictions. So as we started putting this forward, this program forward, uh, we had neighboring jurisdictions that found out about it and have started reaching out. So working with the Colorado Auto Theft Prevention Authority has been, has been huge, but uh, potential other financial means to obtain more stickers or develop this program into a metro-wide program is a possibility. Um, so yeah, all options are on the table. And just to be clear, like, so if I have a car that has, like, say, a six-disc CD changer, probably doesn't have Bluetooth capability, all I have to do is go out buy an air tag or something, and then I can opt in. Correct. Um, so, yeah, if you have an air tag, and if you look at the cost associated with these, it really makes it equitable to the entire community, regardless if you have a vehicle that's, you know, worth $100,000 or you have that six-disc uh, CD changer in your vehicle, you can open this up to to really any any community member by the purchase of one of those devices. And we're not just talking Bluetooth devices. There are aftermarket GPS devices that are relatively inexpensive with inexpensive uh, uh, service plans. But by far the cheapest option to do this is a Bluetooth tracker similar to the Apple AirTag or the Tile and other Bluetooth devices. And just quick follow up, do you have any advice is that if people do that, where should they put that so that like if someone steals it, they might be looking for it, they'll just like put it right in their dashboard or something? The, the only advice that I'll give on where to place it is put it in a place where an offender won't easily find it. I don't want to give out uh, an exact location so that we're advertising to the offenders where we're going to be placing those, but put it in a place where where the, the offender won't find it. The, yeah. Is this strictly for cars or would other vehicles like motorcycles be included in this as well? So motorcycles can be included in this, anything that's considered a motor vehicle. Um, but if you look at other, other items across the board, this isn't designed for those items, but people are already tracking those, tracking those things. If you look at construction sites, um, a lot of construction equipment now has a Bluetooth device uh, attachment. 
where you can put that on construction equipment and, and other items that are commonly stolen. I think I heard a similar question to this, but if you do not opt in ahead of time, but you have an air tag in your car and your car gets stolen, you can't come to the police afterwards and say, I have an air tag, can you guys go find this thing? We will still go find that vehicle. So if we have information, regardless if you sign up for the program, uh, we, will, we will follow up on that. Now, as far as how we follow up on it, in both situations, is going to be dependent on the variables that are there. If we have the vehicle that's, let's say, in, in the state of Wyoming, we're going to be limited on what the Denver Police Department can do. We can work as a referral agent at that time to work with the local agency to recover that vehicle. So I want to make sure I understand how this would work. You fill out this form, and then your car gets stolen, and I call you and say it was stolen. And I've already opted in. At that point, then you go get the data to figure out where it is. Yeah, let's walk through that. So, you sign up for the program. When you sign up for the program, you fill out the registration form, and we send you the two stickers. The stickers are important because we're advertising to uh, our offenders that your vehicle is being tracked, which will act as a deterrent of your vehicle getting stolen. So we're trying to stop your vehicle from getting stolen initially. If your vehicle is stolen then you contact the police department first thing. You report it, an officer will come out and obtain the information. The officer will have information that you're part of the program through some uh, data that we, that we put into our RMS and they'll ask you about it. Once they ask you if you have real-time information because you pay for a provider or if you have one of those providers that, that has real-time information, give it to the officer. The officer will then utilize that information to um, to take a good faith effort. Let's say we come into a circumstance where that information is not readily available. If that information is not readily available and you have a telematic system, a GPS system, that you don't have the information, we'll ask you to fill out a consent form, completely voluntary, and then we'll forward that to our detectives to work as your advocate to obtain the location information about your stolen property. You mentioned other forms of transportation. You can already register a bicycle, a non-motorized vehicle with DPD. Do you have any plans to incorporate GPS if I want to throw an air tracker in my bike to incorporate that into bicycle stuff? Not currently. So currently we're, we're limiting it to motor vehicles. I saw data in here about reported vehicles stolen last year. Is there any updated data for so far this year? I know it's just a couple months in, but. Uh, I do not have, I don't have that information readily available. In a way, could you compare this maybe to like the doorbell uh, video subscriptions a lot of people are doing in different cities where you can say, hey, I have a doorbell. You can't watch it right now, but in the case you need it, you know where to find it. Is it similar to that concept? I mean, it's similar in the concept that we're, we're utilizing existing technology to, to deter crime. So yeah, I mean, in that sense, it is, it is similar. And also similar in the fact that we have to get that permission before we're able to do it. Could you just clarify what a catalytic converter etching kit is? So a catalytic converter etching kit is a, uh, a way for community members to mark their catalytic converter and register it with a unique number. So th that does a couple things for us. One, when you get it, uh, there's a sticker that you place over your catalytic converter and then there's a, um, a low acid level uh, paint that you paint on there that's clear and then that will inscribe a unique number onto that catalytic converter. Then you go online to a third party vendor um, and register, hey, this is, my, this is my catalytic converter. So what that does is two things. One, it deters criminals from stealing that catalytic converter because they know it's registered. And then two, if it unfortunately it is stolen and law enforcement comes across that catalytic converter, they can work with that, that, that company to see who is that catalytic converter registered to. How much is this cost and all like for an owner you know I, I don't know if you set the price or anything like that so as far as the the services and stuff yes so it really depends on the provider so if you look at um, a Bluetooth device you're talking less than thirty dollars with no service fee if you're talking about an aftermarket GPS device you could be talking between thirty and fifty dollars with a service fee um, and probably about the twenty dollar range is no that, oh, sorry is that annual monthly what it's completely dependent on the provider. But there's no fee here. There's no fee. There's no fee here to register for this program. This is an absolutely free program that the Denver Police Department is is asking you to register for. 
So if you have a car that's already equipped with a tracking uh, sort of mechanism built in within the car, or if you're one who has an air tag and you're able to come to police, even if you're not opted into this, you, you said that you guys would still be able to use those devices to track the car. So is, is really the incentive or the benefit of opting in really to just expedite the amount of time you guys have, exp expedite the, the process to locating the vehicle? Yes. So, I mean, you, you talk about expediting that and shortening that time that that vehicle was stolen. So I think I mentioned earlier that of last year when we looked at all the vehicles that were stolen, there was 70% of those uh, of the arrest, 70% of those arrests involved the secondary crime. So that could have been a property crime, a crime of violence, um, a lot of different crimes. So if we can decrease that window that that vehicle is stolen, ideally we decrease other related crimes. If I fill out the form and I register and then my car gets stolen and for whatever reason I don't want you all to use the tracking device after all, am I able to say no at that time? Yeah, so if you do not want us to use the tracking information at the time of, time of the theft, don't fill out the consent because that's the only time that we're going to utilize it. And that consent's really only going to be used if you have a third party, third party uh, vendor. So. <coughs> Yes, you can, and then let's say you're part of the program and you no longer want to be part of the program. If that's the case, you can send us an email, which is provided on the, the website, and say, I would like to opt out of the program, and we will remove you from the program. Do you guys currently, or do you plan to have any kind of program for people who can't, you know, 30 bucks might not sound like a lot, but some people it's a lot to help provide people who can't afford an AirTag or an aftermarket device with them? It's something that we've talked about, but we're not at a place where we're doing that currently. Have you talked to dealerships about this? Because, I mean, there's, there's new car owners that might not get their title in, you know, for a certain amount of time and their tag and everything like that registered, and they may be vulnerable there. Um, have you talked to them about this program? You know, part of the auto theft prevention throughout the city has involved us partnering with not only the dealerships, but with... Uh, the manufacturers themselves. So, yeah, the, those conversations have been had. In addition to that kind of outreach, and I know you mentioned you've had some meetings in District 3, <coughs> what other groups have you reached out to to start publicizing this? Well, today's the big the big first push, <laughs> right? So I, I appreciate you all being here. The We presented this at our community advisory uh, meeting that we hold once a month. Uh, a couple different times now and the main reason for that was to get public feedback. Uh, we've also presented this in our Lowry neighborhood uh, at a community meeting to see what uh, the input was and I'll tell you I, I cannot say thank you to those community members enough because a lot of times they mentioned things and provided feedback that was in our blind spot. So I, I think that feedback loop between the community and the police department is extremely important on getting a program like this off the ground. And just clarify on the Thing next week from four to seven, Monday through Friday. That's at the district stations, but not here. Correct. Correct. It's at all six district stations, not at headquarters. And again, it's it's four to seven p.m. Every district will have that. I will say that some of the dis, uh, some of the districts are expanding on those hours. So if you live in one of those communities, please look at our social media posts, and there are some additional opportunities beyond that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.